Hello everyone, welcome to sunny Greece. Today we have some, I guess, bad news in the world of tax changes, and this is related to an increase in the taxes in uh, Italy, or a decrease in the tax incentives, for those who are interested. And this has been kind of, I think, something that's been growing in popularity, and so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what the changes are, and more importantly, uh, what you can do about it, or what the alternatives are. So let's dive in and discuss that today. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell if you're interested in help with re restructuring, going to another country, setting up, optimizing your taxes, please reach out to us. You can book a call with me, calendar.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer, link in the description below, or send a message through offshorecitizen.net. Okay, so uh, what is going on here? Well, there is this Italian flat tax regime, and under this Italian flat tax regime, there is 100,000 euros flat tax. This has been since 2017 available for people who are interested on foreign income. So this is notably not something that applies to local income, but for foreign income, this has been the case. And it, the idea was to encourage people to be able to move to uh, Italy. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo moved to Turin uh, sometime around 2018 and benefited from it. He was kind of one of the famous people. But the truth is that there have been many. There's been just under 1,200 people who have taken advantage of the regime to date. And the idea was that, you know, you could kind of set up this head tax. And I actually kind of think that this is a good idea because if you sort of think about a country wants to bring in more revenue and it's in a situation where they know their costs, their costs are definitely not 100,000 euros per person. And so if somebody can come and pay a flat tax that is them plus many other people, then why not, right? It seems like a pretty, pretty good way to go for a country. And so this has attracted various different people. I can tell you just anecdotally from talking to our clients, et cetera, we've had a number of clients who moved to Italy under this program. And this is a program that, you know, people would love to live in Italy. Italy's a beautiful country. And they probably wouldn't move there at all if it wasn't for this. So it definitely does attract wealthy people to come to the country who wouldn't otherwise come in. There's been a variety of different concerns about this. One has been that the prices in Milan have been going up on real estate, penthouses, et cetera, being paid for. That's almost certainly true, right? You probably have a situation where the prices of penthouses in Milan have gone up. In fact, luxury property in general in certain key areas have probably been going up. And okay, fair enough. Uh, that doesn't affect normal people, except for the fact that what it does is it creates demand that kind of spills out. So there, there is some argument a person could make there, but you're talking about, you know, at most 1,200 people who are coming there. So it's not an enormous effect on the majority of the market but on the high-end market, certainly it could be a disproportionate effect because there's just a lot less supply in that space, right? So you see disproportionate upward movement. I think that's actually an interesting thing to recognize for the purposes of property investment in general, right? Is that property markets don't always move together, and I think they will move less together. I've kind of done some videos on this in the past talking about sort of the overall structure of real estate and how I think it's going to be quite different than it has been for the last, whatever it is, 50 years or something. So... That's something that is just kind of worth noting as an interesting aside. So what, what have they decided to do? Uh, so they've decided to double the amount. Now, this notably does not apply to people who are already in the program. The people who are already in the program will get to keep the 100,000. Uh, it was up to 15 years that they could, uh, they could benefit from that. And so for that period of time, you're in a situation where if you got in, you're good, at least unless they <laughs> decide to go and change it again. Although. I don't know how, uh, how likely that is. Usually when governments try to take away those sorts of things, I would say almost like retroactively, like violating what they'd promised, usually it gets contested in court and they lose. It isn't always true, but usually that's the case. And so my guess is they will kind of keep those people in. But for anyone new coming into the program in the next year, those people are going to get hit with 200,000 as opposed to 100,000, which is, I would argue, clearly worse. So. One of the ideas behind this is supposedly people think, well, you know, this is like a billionaire tax. Billionaires can afford it. We're in a situation where the majority of people are still going to come. 200,000 is less than the flat, uh, the lump sum tax in Switzerland, but higher than the one in Greece. By the way, so I'm in Greece here. Very beautiful. If you haven't been, worth, uh, worth coming. We're on the Greek islands right now. And so... When you're thinking about that, I think a, it makes Greece much more attractive. The Portuguese golden visa changed uh, such that it no longer allowed for property investment. Uh, the Greek golden visa became much more popular. And I think it's pretty clear that the Greek golden visa was much less attractive for a variety of reasons. I'll do a video on that in the future than the Portuguese one. But, but in the absence of some other program, these programs become popular. 
And so Greece still has a program where depending on the amount of real estate you own, it can be actually less than 100,000, but it starts at 100,000 as a, a lump sum tax. And I think that's gonna become more popular because if you can pay 200,000, you can pay 100,000. Some people might prefer Italy, but you know, is it that much better than Greece? If you're talking about it, it depends on the person, right? And here I think that most people who are looking at these things just don't understand the clientele at all. That would be my thesis. And I say this as somebody who works with uh, people all over the world, uh, would consider moving to Italy myself under a 100,000 regime or something. And I think it's just much, there's, there's quite a number of people for whom they don't make enough money. Like, the truth is just not that you have a billionaire tax. It's not really for billionaires. The majority of the people who are moving are not billionaires. There are people who, you know, they make a good income, but they're probably, I would say, probably a high share of them are annual income in low seven figures to low eight figures. Now, if you're in low eight figures, then yeah, you know what? 200,000 is probably not that big a difference compared to 100,000. But what you find is that there's kind of like power law distributions in wealth. And so there's a lot more people who are making low seven figures who are like, hey, you know, at 100,000, I'm paying like a 10% tax. I can, I can stomach that. Keeping in mind, again, this still only applies to foreign income, not local Italian income. And so anyway, you can kind of figure it out as you do. What are some alternatives? So Greece is an alternative. This makes Switzerland more compelling than it was before. The Swiss lump sum tax is just pretty high. It's, uh, it's hard to argue for the lump sum tax in most cases, but Switzerland's very weird because you can sort of set some stuff up and before you kind of create it, you have the, kind of the plan for it, you can go canton to canton and sort of negotiate with them and give them the reasons why you should, uh, they, they would want to have you in their, uh, in their situation or not. So there's that. The one that I talk about uh, a little that nobody seems to talk about, so I like to bring some things that people are not aware of, is the Polish one, right? So you can do this Polish 50,000 lump sum program. I think that's highly attractive, uh, highly underrated for a lot of people. Uh, the Greek one, sure, is, uh, is an option. And then obviously this one will still be in place. We do see a lot of sort of EU pressure to say we don't want tax competition, et cetera. I think that probably in general, the European Union is fairly, what would I say, untrustworthy, un unreliable. I don't think it's going to be a stable place for tax incentives over the next while, in particular, Western and Southern Europe. It's just not too likely. Now, alternatively, you can go to Cyprus. There's you know, the non-DOM program there, which is very attractive. You can go to Spain. You can get the Beckham Law for six years. You can go to UK. You can get their four-year program. They got rid of their non-DOM. You could go to uh, someplace like Malta. You can get their non-DOM program, uh, which is fairly, fairly okay. And then, of course, there's some low-tax places in Eastern Europe, Bulgaria, Romania, to some extent Hungary, uh, et cetera, as options that might work for you. Or of course, you can just go someplace that is not uh, in the EU. You could go to the Middle East, you can go to Southeast Asia, you can go to Latin America. So there's, there's plenty of places that are available to you. But my guess is that over the next while, you will see increasing pressure, in particular on the EU side, against these sorts of things. And so a person probably needs to plan that, hey, listen, these programs will not last forever. I mean, literally, if you go into the UK and it's four years, okay, that's all you get. If you go to Spain and it's six years, that's all you get. That's probably increasingly going to be unstable, in particular in the EU, which is so much against people being wealthy and so much focused on going after wealth inequality. So anyway, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and I will look forward to seeing you on the next video.